Hi, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering uh, Matthew chapter 8. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me a clarity to speak. Um, give the hearer the ears to hear. Uh, please uh, impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Uh, let it bear fr fruit. Um, let us share it with others in its truth uh, and let it be a means of blessing to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I am reading from the English Standard Version. See? Matthew chapter 8. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. When he had entered uh, Capernaum, a, a, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who follow him, Truly I tell you, uh, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the, into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you, as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples came to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the, by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm and the men marveled saying what sort of man is this that even winds and, and sea obey him and when he came to the other side to the country of the uh gadarenes two demon possessed men met him coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way and behold they cried out what have we to, what have you to do with us O son of god have you come here to torment us before the time now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Bless the reading of your word, God. Let it fill us up until we can eat of it again. If you are just here for the read-through, um, thank you for um, coming to read through scripture with me. And if you, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> um, and if you're here for the in-depth study, stick around and we'll dive right in. Okay, so we are going to um, dive right into chapter 8. <laughs> uh, so um, Matthew groups uh his writing style is is not um he's not writing in chronological order he's writing like uh, by topic so um this is a group of miracles that he is covering here 
Um, the first one does take place immediately after he comes down from the Sermon on the Mount. So it is, that is continuously from the previous story. So, um, but, uh, the other, uh, miracles are kind of just spread out topically of, I guess he was writing, you know, different people write different styles. So I guess he was just, you know, thinking of a lot of miracles at that point in time and, and decided to cover them all here. So, um, uh, the first thing that uh, he does when he comes down from the mountain is that a, a, a leper comes um, to him and kneels before him saying if he is, if the Lord is willing, he can make him clean. Now, if you want to know about the laws concerning leprosy, they are covered in Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. Um, it's some serious stuff. Uh, if you had leprosy to skin disease, then you uh, were... Um, uh, ostracized you had to leave your family and you had to go and live like outside of the community where other leopards uh lived and it was like this whole thing if you were going to be clean clean so apparently this leper heard that you know jesus was in town and he decided like hey you know i want to go and and see if the lord is willing to um heal me and uh he is and jesus could have spoken he could have said you are healed when he asked him but i think that jesus touched him to show compassion because you weren't to touch a leper in the old testament like you couldn't get near these people um uh, that i didn't like how i just said that but you couldn't get near a, le a leprous person <laughs> um in fear that you would uh be become lepers yourself so the fact that he touches him to heal him i think that it is showing a bit of compassion um, moving on to the faith of the uh, centurion, uh, he is a Roman Gentile. Centurion is a Roman, um, so he is not a Jewish person, and he still believes. And he believes so much in what the Lord can do that his servant has fell ill, and he's like, just say the word, and he'll be healed. And um, Jesus says, hey, you know, um, there will people become people who will come from the east and the west. So there will be people all over the world, Gentiles all over the world, who will become believers. And that's us, guys. If you're a Gentile, if you're Jewish, then you know um, uh, you're still saved by by, by Jesus Christ. But uh, this is a hopeful uh, verse for us Gentiles. Uh, uh, that that Jesus proclaims that that uh, Gentiles will. Uh, Believe all over the earth here in just this one uh, section. Uh, now, Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10, goes into more details about the centurion's faith. So, if you would want uh, to read more and further information on the centurion's faith and what happened afterward, um, you can almost certainly turn to Luke for that. Um, moving on to verses 14 through 17. So here, Peter's mother has uh, fallen sick and um, Jesus just touches her <laughs> and uh, she she gets up and she serves them. So it's just like, um, you know, you see you're sick <laughs> with a fever and the Lord touches you so much. You you feel so good. You're like, you want some, you got, you want some to eat? <laughs> so she, she serves them and um, who is with her uh, later on in that verse. Um, uh Jesus heals many, um, and those healings fulfill the prophecies uh, located in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, um, that Jesus would, uh, these are things that will come, and this would be a sign that this is him, this is the Messiah, he's going to do these things, and here by um, doing those healings, he is fulfilling that prophecy. So the, uh -huh. scribe, so the scribe comes in first and says, you know, hey, teacher, I'll follow you anywhere, and uh Jesus tells him, hey, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but I don't have a place to uh, to lay my head. So it's a, it's a cost. It's, it's definitely a cost to following the Lord and um, serving him. Uh, a lot of people think that you're supposed to get all of this monetary, just some sort of gain, some sort of financial gain, and that's not it. You know, when he came, all these miracles here are healings or safety. <laughs> There's no, you know, pie in the sky mansion here uh, that you're going to get. Uh, that's something that is going to promise believers um, in the afterlife. So, uh, uh, and then we, we come to, sorry for the blank. <laughs> we come to the, uh, the disciple. 
uh, the would-be disciple who who wants to go and bury his father uh, first and Jesus like no you you follow me this is an urgency this is an urgent matter uh, let the dead bury their their own dead just means that somebody else is going to be there to follow to to bury your your dad you know follow me that that's what you're supposed to be doing right now at this moment is to follow me so um, uh, there's a cost uh, of, of giving up something to follow the Lord um, and uh, so we should be mindful of that so um, at this point uh, uh, before the uh, uh, no so right after he's doing all these healings at, at Peter's house um, uh, a crowd starts forming so Jesus gives the word to go to the uh, over to the other side but before he could get to the boat get in the boat he was stopped by the scribe and the uh, the would-be disciple and then now he's finally uh, getting to this boat and uh, his disciples followed him and then um, uh, there was a, a storm on the sea, but Jesus went to sleep. Now, I can relate to Jesus here because I'm a hard sleeper. I remember my grandmother used to say, a tornado could come through here and you would just sleep right through it, you know? And I do, I really do sleep that hard. So I understand how he could be asleep. <laughs> and it's a storm going on in the boat. But anyways, the, uh, the disciples are panicking and they're like, hey, Lord, wake up. We're going to perish. And he's like, you know, oh, you have a little faith. And at that moment, he uh, he calms the wind and the waves. Uh, Mark actually tells us uh, what the Lord says in Mark, uh, Mark 4, 39 through 41. Um, and Jesus uh, speaks to the wind. He says, peace be still. And uh, everything calmed down. And uh, uh, they marveled in Matthew, but in Mark, in, those same, in that same chapter, uh, it says that they were afraid. So this is their reaction. It wasn't like, oh my goodness, that's so amazing. You can do, you know, you can call, you, he can speak to the, you know, because we see, uh, live in an era where it's just a lot of these superhero movies and we think that that would be the, our reaction if we saw real miracles or something, somebody really doing something, but it, it doesn't. They're just like, oh my God, who is this? You know, even the wind and the, and, and the waves obey him. They were afraid. They, they, they fear from the holy, somebody so holy standing next to you that <laughs> so you know it's like this is god right here oh my goodness that's um so yeah i would have been afraid of too thinking like this is the lord like wow he's you know uh he can calm the wind and the waves it's amazing um and so um we're moving on to um the final uh verses uh, 28 through 34 and I got some quotes for you so give me a second guys so um before I get started and going into the demon uh, possessed man I wanted to uh, read this quote from um, Dr. R.C. R.C. Sproul's commentary on the book of uh, Matthew it's on page 224 um so it says, if you were summoned to a dangerous meeting today, I doubt you would think in terms of the number of demons that might be present to harm you there. We almost never think about the devil or demons unless we are watching the latest Hollywood blockbuster about exorcism or supernatural beings. The concept of evil spiritual beings has but all disappeared from the consciousness of the Christian community. Christians say they believe in God who is extremely supernatural, but we live practically speaking as if there were no God. We live as if there were no such beings as angels, the devil, and his legion of cohorts that are called demons. Yet, when we look at the biblical worldview, we see that scripture declares that this universe is inhabited not only by animals and by human beings, but also by created spiritual beings called angels, some of which are good and some of which are evil. Uh, and so, um, we are advised to... Uh, uh, Put on the whole armor of God by Apostle Paul, and the armor of God is um, Ephesians six and uh, I think it's no oh, eleven. It's Ephesians six eleven through eighteen is where you'll find the whole armor of God, so that we can fight against this. Um, these uh, it says, for we do not. I mean, this quote from Ephesians. Why not? Yeah. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And then it goes into the armor of God. Stand therefore and gird your, you know, it, it tells you that each uh, piece of armor to put on every day. I put on the armor every day, guys. It's important. Um, uh, do you believe what Paul says about the armor of God? Do you agree that there are powers and principalities beyond the institutions of this world? Do you believe that there are powers of darkness that are that have an enormous impact on individuals, on societies, and on nations? Shake this up. In the middle of the 20th century, the eminent Swiss theologian Oscar Coleman wrote a trilogy of books in which he discussed the virtual neglect of the supernatural realm in studies today. He also made the interesting observation that not only can individuals come under demonic influence, as scripture indicates, but so can whole nations. This is entire nations can be subjected to the authority of the power of the supernatural uh, principalities of darkness and wickedness. One in particular, um, uh, the English title was Hitler, the Scourge of Europe. It was a study on the life of Adolf Hitler based on many of the documents they were recovered at the end of the war. It was a reproduction of an early entry in uh, Hitler's diary. In that entry, Hitler, Hitler had written, this evening I have made a covenant with Satan. He was not speaking hyperbole. His closest henchman was profoundly engaged in devil worship. The swastika was uh, intentionally a distortion of the Christian symbol of the cross and the third Reich, which uh, designed to su supplant the kingdom of God. What I'm sorry, the third Reich, R-E-I-C-H, was designed to su supplant the kingdom of God. Of course, demonic involvement with governments did not begin with Hitler, nor did it end with him. So I, I wanted to um, quote, quote that because of the, um, uh, if you believe in God, you have to believe in what he tells us about warnings about demons and, and, and demonic spirits and they, they are real. When Satan fell from heaven um, and was cast out on the earth, he took a third of the angels with him and they, and, and, and they are demonic and uh, demonic beings. And so uh, we come to this chapter in Matthew where we are introduced to a man possessed with, with these demons. Um, and there were two men. So Matthew records two men, uh, Luke and uh, Mark record one demon possessed man. The demon possession story in Mark is in Mark 5, 1 through 20. And in Luke, it is 8, um, chapter 8, uh, verses 26 through 39. So they both cover one. Uh, uh, Matthew covers two. So um, maybe one was less possessed. Maybe uh, uh, Mark and Luke both focused on the one uh, that um, demonic man but here we have two in Matthew's account. So if there was one, there were surely two. <laughs> so um, this guy, he's um, the the demon has given this guy this super um, like natural power to where he's he's so fierce that no one could pass his way. And and this is the place where Jesus decides to land his boat. Surely the Lord knows that he's going here to heal this man in this moment. Um, and so um, he heals him. But when he appears on the scene, the demons cry out and they knew who he was. They already know. They know who the Lord is. And then they say, have you come to torment us before our time? So they know that their days are numbered. They know the truth that's revealed to us in the book of Revelation. They know that they will be cast out into the lake of fire. <laughs> So, um, uh, Jesus, uh, did not come to torment them from before their time. So when they request that, um, he, they be cast into the swine, Jesus grants them that. And then the swine end up, end up uh, running violently, um, and drowning. But, uh, uh, Mark actually covers how many pigs it actually was. He said that it was over 2000 pigs that, that, that the demons possessed from just two men. So, Wow, <laughs> Man, I don't even have words for that. How how many um, pigs that the, the demonic spirit from just two men would feel? 
um, and, and causes violent rage among the pigs to, to go and drown themselves in the sea. And of course, that costs the farm owner a lot of money. So they go um, and they tell everyone in the town what has happened. And uh, the, 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 um, the chapter ends just astonishing. With, and I, I do not know why, but they begged him to leave the region. So either these are people who don't, do not have compassion and they're just money hungry and saying like, Oh, we don't care that he freed these this, these men whose lives been overtaken by these demons because this man is clearly upright and talking. We just care about the the uh, the the pigs. But the scripture doesn't say why they said that. We don't know if they just didn't want somebody like that around, some some holy guy who's coming to cure everybody. I have no idea. But um, that is how the uh, chapter ends with they begged him to leave the region. Um, but um, the other gospels do account that he goes on. He uh, that uh, Jesus tells him to go and uh, um, tell everyone what happened. You know that he was cured, and I'm pretty sure that he his testimony saved a lot of people. Even to this day, he's still saving people. These people mentioned in scripture made sure they died. They sacrificed their lives so that we could have the word that we have today. Um, and I hope that it is a means of blessing to you as it is to me. Um, and uh, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forevermore. And I hope to see you guys again next time. Thanks. Bye.